know, I, one of my comments early on was after a long um, drought in stage three disease, after chemo radiotherapy, we had the Pacific data. After even a longer drought in small cell, uh, <laughs> we, we, we had some, finally some positive data. Um, I think you're aware of that. Uh, <laughs> Vaguely. <laughs> could you walk us through the, the uh, uh, Empower small cell trial? Um, so that was a randomized phase three trial looking at, um, it was carboplatinum, cisplatinum was not part of the backbone, uh, and atoposide uh, with or without atezolizumab um, in patients with um, extensive stage disease. And that is the first positive study that we've had in small cell. There was no benefit in terms of response rate. It's hard to beat 65% yeah. response rate in yeah. small cell. But there was a PFS benefit of two months, and then there was an OS benefit of two months. Um, and the first time we're hitting over one year in overall survival in extensive stage small cell. Probably the most common questions that I get from folks in the community is my patient has brain meths. Mm -hmm. And patients had to have treated brain meths and be stable um, to go on study. And so what do you do in that patient who needs to have whole brain radiation at the same time that they're starting on therapy and um, I think we're learning a little bit as we go um, of that it is in our practice we have been starting chemo and adding radiation with cycle two and finding it's been fairly safe in the CNS um, and then the consolidation radiation therapy which consolidation radiation was also not um, part of the study mm -hmm. um, because it was t many of those patients that that was their target um, lesion but it has become a new standard of care and a, a new regimen that we're using because we yeah. do see a lot of those patients. Yeah, I was going to ask MJ in, in terms of, um, uh, I mean, I, I think it has changed the standard of care uh, after, it uh, again, with, with um, uh, I don't need to give another patient carbotoposide uh, for extensive stage small cell and, and realize the benefit we were getting there, which hasn't changed in a bit. So I, I, I do think this has changed our practice. Well, I think so. After nearly four decades, uh, it was about time. So. We were all ready and primed, and this is after hundreds of negative trials of whatever we added to carboetoposide, we couldn't move the needle, and we finally have. But I think that uh, it begs for the question about doublet immunotherapy, which unlike non-small cell where we are debating and coming up uh, on the side of not using it, uh, in second line after carboetoposide failure, I've seen good results with uh, uh, AP Nevo. Uh, I actually have uh, uh, four patients who have done well out of about 12 that I've treated, and two of those, amazingly, are on breaks. And both of them have gone beyond 12 months on break. There was never such a thing. I had never seen such a thing as break from therapy for extensive state small cell. Yeah, when it works, it works. Yeah. Right? Uh, so the then the question is, is would, you, <laughs> would you save it for second line or not? Uh, and, and my view always is to never save things for later because that right. later may not come for well, that patient. Yeah, particularly since we, we have had some recent uh, negative data yes. from, a, from a maintenance uh, trial in, in, in immunotherapy. John, uh, you know, we talked in, um, in non-small cell about PDL one and, and tumor mutation burden. What, what do we know about that in small cell? Yeah, well, you know, in, in this study, now there is some uh, data, if you're looking at a single arm uh, that comes from uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering that, that suggests that TMB was predictive of benefit, you know, from immunotherapy, uh, Ipinevo in, in that case. Um, but in, in the uh, Empower 133 study, uh, as Leora could, could tell us, uh, tumor mutation burden turned out to, to not be predictive of, of getting greater uh, overall benefit. Uh, and, and in a way, I think that um, simplifies life uh, because here we have a regimen with the tezolizumab where you're getting substantial benefit. And for small cell in particular, it would be challenging to get TMB data back for these patients. These patients often need to start therapy quickly. Uh, and you don't have the ancillary benefits of getting all these driver mutations by, by virtue of getting uh, TMB. So it makes life simpler that as of right now, you don't need PDL1 data and you don't need TMB data to start your patient on the uh, Empower 133 regimen. So, uh, Leora, I, I, we have a, what seemed to me to be kind of um, conflicting bits of data. We, we recently had a, an approval for a single agent nivolumab in third line small cell, but Checkmate 331, which looked at the maintenance strategy, was a negative uh, trial, which doesn't quite make sense to me. Does it make sense to you? So it's hard to know if, based on what MJ said before, if this, this antigen release and having the IO agent on board at the same time, um, because the other trial we know has been negative is the comparison of 
nivolumab to topotecan or amrubicin in the in the second line setting. So and that's a pretty low bar. It, it, it was. Um, the topotecan looked like a good drug I might start using. Um, but, um, you know, so the, the strategy in small cell right now, or if we're going to improve on that strategy, is I don't know if you want to start a quadruple regimen of chemo nevo ipi, yeah. um, but it, it appears that it's, it's giving it upfront with chemotherapy that, that is a solution. Yeah, and I never really understood the third line single agent. I mean, when I use um, immunotherapy, in sm when I used to use it before the first line indication, um, I would use the Nevo Ipi. I mean, it doubles the response. If you're going to do it, you might as well yeah. go with the, the most aggressive thing, and you have to kind of bite the bullet with toxicity. Yep. But that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. I think uh, another point to take home, obviously, Ipi Nevo was something that, uh, based on early data, we were doing in uh, second-line patients with extensive stage small cell, but those those were patients who had only progressed after chemo. Now, in the setting of getting chemo plus atezo, are they going to still de derive the same benefit from epinevo? It's a slightly different population asking a slightly different question. So, um, so I think that that will be something to look at, which hasn't really been looked at before. 